Willkommen zurück, liebe Community vom Swiss Photo Day. Schön, dass Sie da sind. Wir sind jetzt auch wieder zurück, schon mit dem nächsten Talkgast. Und ich habe jetzt ein paar Mal Werbung gesehen. Das ist, wie wir da das ganze Set müssen umstellen fürs Live-Shooting. Aber jetzt wird es wirklich lang keine Werbepause mehr geben. Also, falls euch das auffällt, ist keine Sorge. Wir müssen das jetzt kompensieren. Jetzt haben wir unseren nächsten Gast, den ich hier da begrüßen darf. Es ist Emma. Du bist Videografin und du kommst ursprünglich aus England. Und du lebst jetzt aber schon seit einigen Jahren hier bei uns in der Schweizer Berge. Und du hast viele Jahre für BBC gearbeitet und bist auch heute noch auf vielen Messen in England als Speakerin unterwegs. Äh, Emma ist Deutsch am Lernen, darum wechsle ich jetzt auf Englisch, wechseln, damit sie sich auch wirklich in ihrer Muttersprache kann ausdrücken kann. Um, Emma, when have you discovered videography for yourself? Um, so, well, actually, I started my life, my career, like you, in front of the camera mm -hmm. at the BBC, reading the news and as a video and as a reporter. So I had all the crew and the, and the sound equipment and uh, the sound crew. And then the BBC introduced something called video journalists, which is another word for videographer. And um, I thought, I don't want to do this. I don't want to operate a camera. I'm not interested. But actually, as soon as I got my hands on it, I realized I could be creative and I fell in love with it. I loved the control. I loved taking ownership of everything, of filming, editing, and then standing in front of the camera. For me, it was the best thing. And because of that, um, you know, storytelling is in my blood. That's what I'm so, so interested in, because I have this background as a journalist. Wow, also die Emma, die hat wirklich als Journalistin angefangen, ist erst vor der Kamera gsi und hat dann irgendwann mal die Videokamera in die Hand genommen und hat einfach gemerkt, da nicht Kontrolle, da ist meine Leidenschaft und dann hat sie gepackt und jetzt macht sie das Vollzeit und sie wird jetzt dann gerade ihre Präsentation halten und wird uns ein bisschen mehr über ihre Geheimnisse vom Storytelling erzählen, das ist etwas, was sehr, sehr wichtig ist, wenn man Video macht und ich würde sagen, Emma, uh, I will Give the word to you. <laughs> we are ready for your presentation. We are looking forward uh, for Thank it. You. Thank you very much. Well, firstly, I just want to say, I learn a Deutsch langsam. So I'm going to be doing this course today, um, this talk to you in English. So I hope that's okay. So welcome to Storytelling Secrets of Cinematic Videography. Basically, I would normally do a talk on the art of storytelling, and it would take me about an hour to do so. But I've been given 15 minutes. So instead, I'm going to give you my five secrets of storytelling. So. Who am I? My USB, USP is a woman with a camera telling your story. And in everything I do, so with Story of Your Day, which is an international wedding film company, and with the Story Creatives, which is a corporate brand, as you can see that story is the root of all of that because I am a storyteller. Storytelling is in everything I do. My storytelling ethos remains the same for my branding films, my corporates, and my promotional films. So for me, especially for corporates, because that's what I'm going to be concentrating on today, it's all about allowing your clients to be able to connect with their audience and tell their stories. Okay, so what is storytelling? Well, this is the official wording of storytelling. Storytelling is the vivid description of ideas, beliefs, personal experiences, and life lessons through stories or narratives that evoke powerful emotions and insights. But why do we care about that? Why does it even matter? Well, JK Rowling, the author and film producer of Harry Potter, She's nailed it. She says, there's always room for a story to transport people to another place. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Because just think about it. We tell our kids stories when we go to bed at night. So it's storytelling, it's reading a book, it's watching a film, and it's listening to a drama on the radio. We escape with a story. We all love stories. And that's why storytelling is so important in videography. So let's get started with the top tips. So the first tip is people, places, and their stories. I'm just going to sort my uh, uh, files out here because it looks like everything's in the wrong order. So I apologize for that. Bear, bear with me, please. It doesn't look I've got it. It doesn't matter. I know this off by heart. So people, places, <laughs> and their stories. So for me, storytelling is more than that. It's about people. People are characters, and that is what is so important. So when I want to do a story, I concentrate on the person in that story because they are the characters, and that's what we're so interested in. So 
It's my job to bring out the best in people on camera so they then know uh, and bring out the best in themselves for their brand, if it's a wedding for themselves as a couple. And so it's all about the person and the people. So to illustrate that, I'd just like to share with you my corporate film for the story creatives, because this is all about people, places and their stories. So that's live TV for you, isn't it? They actually, we actually played the wrong film. So we're now going to play the film that accentuates and tells the story of people and places. cracking with secret two which is aesthetics versus the story or story versus aesthetics whatever you prefer so in cinematic videography obviously we all want to show off our videography mastery skills and we all want to use the most beautiful shots but when we're talking about storytelling in cinematic videography it's not always about the most beautiful shots it's about storytelling so it's really tempting to use those aesthetic shots but you need to use shots with meaning they have to be meaningful so an anecdote here would be when I worked for the BBC and I was told in the edit, always use the most impactful shot to start your film. That is definitely the case. You have to do that. But you can't throughout the film just have lots of beautiful shots because they're beautiful. You have to tell a story. And so that's what's really, really important. So always remember the story when you're choosing your shots. A really good example of this is drone shots. We all love drone shots. Everybody loves drone shots and everyone wants to use drone shots. I like drone shots, but they have to be well placed. And I certainly never, ever start a film unless a client asks me to with a drone shot. I start with an intimate storytelling shot. And then my drone shots, then they, they're used as puncture, like grammar, and taking you through the story um, and from shot to shot and scene to scene. That's when it's good to use a drone shot. I mean, I've been doing a lot of work for Manlikan Barn recently in Seveillard, who make the gondolas 
others. So obviously, they want lots of drone shots. So in that case, it's really, really important. But drone shots do not make storytelling shots. So that's what's worth remembering when it comes to aesthetics and the story. OK, so sound design. Now, we're now getting a bit juicy. For me, sound design is half the story. So I started my life as a radio journalist, and I absolutely love the radio, and I love listening to the radio, to dramas on the radio. And what's great about radio is that we all have a different story. We all hear a different story. Our imaginations are different, aren't they? So every character looks different, every scene looks different, everything looks different. And that's why audio is so important. In cinematic videography, you cannot tell a story without audio. Audio. There are lots of different types of audio. There's the ambient audio, which draws in the audience. There's clips and interviews, and of course, they are the core of the storytelling. And then there's music. And now music can make or break a film. You can't use the right music, so you can't use an upbeat music track with a slow-paced film. So it's really, really important. So gathering audio is the first stage of storytelling and equipping yourself so you gather really clear audio. Then identifying the right audio for your films is the second major stage of storytelling and using audio for storytelling. And being able to put the audio into your films in a storytelling way is the third and final way. And that is what sound design is within your films. And a little tip here, if you're really interested in ambient audio, it's always a good idea to have a bank, like a library of audio. So when you go out and you're filming and you're capturing different types of audio, it's really good to just bank them up so you can use them at a later date. So now, the rules of syntax and frame-by-frame frame editing. So this is really important here. And I'm going to talk to you first about sequencing, because sequencing is the first stage of um, syntax. I mean, not many people actually follow the rules of syntax. When I started at the BBC, we were taught about sequencing because we'd go out and we'd gather lots of interviews with people. So we had to set them up with a sequence of shots. So it's really important that you know what shots you need to gather and how they can edit together, how they work and how they don't work. So, for instance, if I was doing an interview with someone and I then wanted to set them up with a sequence of sh shots and I'd perhaps sit them down at a table reading a book or something, the key would be to get first a wide establisher shot, then to get a tight shot of the hands, a tight shot of the hands, tight shot of the face, an over the shoulder shot of what they're doing, and then a something different shot it was used, used to be called at the BBC. This could be a dirty shot, which is shooting through something, it's not actually a dirty shot, or it could be a silhouette, or... Um, a pull focus, something different. But you don't have to film them in all that order, but the point is it's important to edit them in right order because otherwise you get things called jump cuts. So you, can, you can't have a wide to a wide shot. And a mid to a mid doesn't look very good either, but a close up to a mid or a close up to a wide or a wide to a mid or a close up to a close up to a close up, they all work and they work perfectly. So it's really important that you understand that. But the next level of it is frame-by-frame frame editing and following the rules of syntax. And that's basically making sure that it's not about plonking those shots in order and just hoping that they work. It's just it's putting them precision together, putting them together so each shot flows into the next shot and into the next shot absolutely perfectly. And that's what's really important about the rules of syntax and very important for storytelling. You can remove the music, you can remove the audio, and it still looks amazing. Now, that was the film that we played a little while ago, uh, and I'm not sure if we're about to play that film again, but I'd like to play that film again, if it's possible. This is a film of uh, Marilou and Andy's wedding. I don't normally show wedding films, but um, in this case, I'm going to show it to you because it's really important about following the rules of syntax. And we need to follow the shot from when Andy looks down, we follow his eyes down. When he looks up and out, we follow his eyes out. So if you're ready to play that for me. Thank you. 
So if you manage to watch that film again on replay, it's all about following his eyes. His eyes lead the way. So when he looks down, we're looking at the ring. When he looks up and out, we're looking at him looking forward to the wedding. Um, I had a little play with that wedding, uh, practicing the rules of syntax. So it's a really good way of d demonstrating it. So secret five, the last one, the art versus the management of storytelling. I can't teach you the art of storytelling in 15 minutes, in an hour, or even in a week, because it takes time practice and experience. So for me, it's about teaching you how to manage your storytelling. And first and foremost, you need to have a kick-ass wedding work workflow from the moment of inquiry through to delivery and beyond. So before the event, this is the most important thing. You can identify a good story from the point of inquiry. And the more planning you do before the actual event or the corporate that you're filming or the wedding that you're filming, the more that you do gives you the best chances actually on the day for storytelling. On the day, it means that you can be fully prepared during the planning stages, that allows you to be fully prepared. It allows yourself to be receptive, open and alert on the day, so you're not running around filming everything that you see. And it also means that you can discreetly capture the moments as they unfold naturally. You don't have to film everything, and that's the whole point. Even if you haven't storyboarded, but you've got an idea of the story in your head, you won't need to film everything. It's also really important to listen carefully to the audio on the day. And it's also OK to direct different situations. I mean, obviously, I don't do that at a wedding, but for corporate films that you can. And then, of course, in the edit, that's your last chance to nail the storytelling if you haven't already identified the story. So my tip is to watch back your footage. But while you're watching back the footage, also listen to the audio, because that's really, really important. Um, the first story that you identify in that edit might not be the one, but when you find the one, stick with it. Basically, the difference between a highlights film uh, for weddings and a trailer is a highlights film is just a montage of random beautiful aesthetic shots put to music. But of course, a trailer follows one story. Make sure you use frame by frame editing and the rules of um, syntax that I just talked to you about. And also, of course, sound design will draw in the viewer. And finally, something I haven't talked about but is important, it's about colour grading. So colour grading can accentuate, accentuate your day and accentuate the film, but don't grade too much. OK, so <clears throat> in order to do all this and to do this well, I have a plethora of filming techniques. And I teach all about this in my Evolve videography training. Um, and so you can get more from the QR code at the end. So that, you, that will get, take you to some gift discount codes and to some free trainings all about my filming techniques and my related gear. But as you can see, I have as much audio gear here as I have uh, camera gear, because audio is half the story. So, now now, I wonder if we have any questions. We've had a couple in, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I have um, different uh, questions. The first that I um, will take to you um, is, or asking you is, what was your most emotional story that you had to tell the, the world or to, to produce? Which one was that? Um, it would probably be a, a <laughs> wedding film. OK. Uh, yeah, it would, yeah, it would probably be a wedding film. Actually, it would be a film that I um, filmed quite, quite recently, actually, that I haven't been able to share on my website okay. um, because of um, privacy. But um, yeah, I mean, the thing, the thing that's most important is that a, um, a people think that you've got to have either a romantic film and it's got to be emotional. But actually, yeah. if you're telling the story, it is, what, it is what it is and it can be really joyous. So the last film I edited was a real party film with a real okay. party vibe. So I don't have favourites in terms of emotion. I just love the variety. And if the, the point is, if mm -hmm. you tell a story, every film will be different. OK, yeah. they're not going to follow a formula. So therefore, it's r always really, really hard <laughs> for me to identify just one because I love them all. OK, that's cool. <laughs> nice. Thank you for the question, uh, for the answer. Um, and which camera uh, or the next question is which camera you have or which one is your favorite camera? OK, so I was just <laughs> talking to someone about this. Um, so I was originally taught on video cameras, then moved over to DSLR cameras. Yeah. And then from there, obviously, more recently, back onto mirrorless, cam can uh, mirrorless cameras. I'm a Canon 
Canon um, educator, so okay. obviously <laughs> yeah, I use Canon. <laughs> and I use um, three different cameras. So I use the Canon C70, which is a cinema cinematic camera, and okay. then I use an EOS R and um, an R6. That's because even though I'm a solo shooter when I do sh um, shoots with multiple cameras, yep. I want them all to match up. So okay. I'm, on a cam I'm on a Canon, I understand. and I like Canon glass. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And which one was your first camera that you had produced? Oh. The first, first story that you uh, had? So it was a video camera. It was a Sony Z10. A but Sony the, the BBC <laughs> gave me two cameras oh when okay. I left very kindly. <laughs> and actually, it took a lot for people to move over and say, oh, you need DSLR cameras if you're filming weddings and corporates. And I was like, well, no, you don't. But uh, actually, I then soon moved over to DSLR cameras. Okay, so very yeah. cool. <laughs> That's nice to change to Canon. I'm back to video <laughs> now with my C70. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> very nice. So, um, the last question that I have is um, from Luca. He is asking, um, is it more important for you to, ha to have a good camera than an objective? Or is it more important for you to have an objective that is super good than the camera? An object, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, OK, Luca, I think the point is here that's really, really important. It is <laughs> not about the, all the gear and no idea. Um, and it's more, you can take a great film with a GoPro, with an iPhone. It's not about the gear. It's about the storytelling. And it's about the subject. And it's knowing how to use that camera. That's much, much more important about the camera. There's no point up updating your cameras every five minutes if you can't use your last camera um, it, as well as you possibly can. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks for Thank having you. Thank you so much. And then we will say, we will give it to the next, um, we will give it to the next person. She is unterwegs.